Hello everyone, welcome to the video and welcome to the channel. This is going to be a review of The Flash Season 9, Episode 10 titled A New World Part 1. I'm not sure how many parts are going to be in this series, but I'll be doing a review on each and every single episode as this is the finale of The Flash, this is the final season and these are the, supposed to be the final episodes anyway. I'll be doing a review on each and every single one of them. I've been a long time fan of The Flash, I've seen every single episode from season 1 to this season, I've seen the quality rise and fall, I've seen characters join and leave, some of them die, some of them retire. And as this is the end of the journey, I thought what would be a better time to do a Flash video than to review the final ending and see what good I can extract from it, what bad I can see from it. Now. I'll be doing this in chapters, so we'll go from each and every single scene, from the starting scene to the end, I'll be going through the scenes, I'll be analyzing them, I'll say what's good about them, what I enjoyed, what I didn't enjoy, any redundancies, anything as I found stupid, and we'll be doing it in that format. As I'm sat here, I'm looking at notes on my phone right now. I didn't exactly write a full script, since if I did write a script, this video will probably go up to 40 minutes, I have that much to say about it. So I have some things bullet pointed and I'll be going through them all, saying my thoughts, giving my take on each and every single one, and that's how we'll be doing this video. Now, without further ado, let's start with the very first scene. We start with Eddie Thorne, or we assume this is Eddie Thorne anyway, I'm not sure about his name. Was it shown? I'm not too sure. Anyway, it's a bit confusing, so we see this person who looks exactly like Eddie Thorne, who is supposed to be dead, mind you. Now, we see him in this confusing scene, he's signing into a place or is he leaving? It's a bit of a redundant scene, but the payoff is actually much later on, so I won't be focusing too much on the scene, just that it seems a bit confusing just dropping Eddie like this without any sort of pay off when any sort of um, without any sort of scripting I guess there's no foreshadowing there's nothing else that he's just in this scene and we aren't really sure what to do about it but like I said something happens to him in the end so let's go now the scenes that are shown after that is Allegra and Chester to be honest with you I don't care too much about that scene but I will say this so in the previous episode we saw that Chester actually made this suit for Allegra, which is supposed to conceal her identity, and the suit turns out to be this, which obviously she hates it, and I kind of understand it looks like something. Let's go with it looks like something and leave it at that because, well, it's not appealing, it looks terrible, and she says as much. But she tries her best not to let him down too much, so you can at least give her that much. Allegra is not one of my favorite characters, Chester isn't either, but. I suppose neither of them are that bad, I just don't care too much. Now we go to this scene of... I'm skipping a scene here, there's a scene with Cecile, I'm just going to skip it, it doesn't have any sort of significance to me. Now the next scene after that is Barry is taken to the past, to the year and day his parents died and he's not able to leave. Now something I would like to point out about this scene is that blue light right there. To the end, I'm not quite sure what caused it. I think I might know the cause of it, but I don't quite think it's explained in this episode, no. We'll see when we get there, but what we need to note from here is Barry's taken to the past, to the very day his parents, to the very day his mother gets killed anyway. Now, Barry arrives in the past. Of course, he tries to figure out the time he is. He tries to figure out the time he's in. He looks at the number plates and figures out he's in the year 2000. Now, his first idea is to go to Joe West, obviously that's the man who raised him, but as we've concluded, this is the year 2000. Joe West does not know Barry yet. He should be a sort of friend of Barry's father, but that's about it. But Barry still goes on and finds Joe. Now what he does when he does find Joe is the thing that kind of kicked me off a bit. It's a bit of a nitpick, but... He basically just goes to this police officer who doesn't know him, he doesn't know him either. There is sort of, there is no interconnection between these two characters in this time period right here. Now Barry goes and demands to see something from a system which, as he promptly figures out, hasn't been invented yet. And then he demands to see public records 
of someone else. What kind of civilian could just go to a police officer and just demand to see something from public records? Obviously, Joe doesn't want to give him this, but because of his instinct or his gut, Joe just agrees to work with him and give him the support he needs. Okay, Joe has always been an intuitive person. Now, that works both ways, though. We've seen that Joe was the first person to actually suspect that Thorne was reverse flash or Wells was reverse flash in the first season because of minor hints. You're really going to be telling me that Joe saw Barry in his adult form, someone who was suspicious and someone who was completely misplaced. He didn't take any notes, he didn't look at the CCTV cameras, he didn't keep any pictures from there and try to figure it out later and in the future just figure out, okay, this is Barry Allen because Barry kind of screws up the timeline here by acting so reckless, but it's what he does next that really seals the deal. Okay, so Barry looks at the calendar here and sees the exact date. It's 18th, 2000. This is the exact day, the exact date, and the exact year his parents are going to die, while his mother is going to die anyway. Now what he does with this information is he leaves Joe with a lot of questions, which is already a bad thing. Joe is a detective, well a police officer at this point, but he's already smart, he's still Joe West. He will try to figure out more about the situation. Now, what Barry does here is he finds Martin Stein. Obviously, there's good reason why he would find Martin Stein, he's one of the smartest people in this time period. But what he does is he says he's in the future and demands help. Which, of course, it works in his favor because Stein takes it as a bit of a joke. But the fact that Barry reveals he's from the future and says his name is something that should definitely ruin the timeline. But I've, as we've seen from this flat first season to this one, we know that there are no repercussions to this stupid maneuver here. Now, he sees his parents, of course, across the road, and he gets attacked by a speedster. It doesn't really take too much work to realize that this is Eobard Thorne. He's the only speedster who hates Barry this much and the only one who, well, just doesn't seem to die. So he gets knocked out, gets taken to the hospital, and they start attending to him. Well, his father starts attending to him because he's a, he's supposed to be a doctor, and his mother's also there. Now, this scene is a bit corny, so I'm just going to be skipping most of it. Now, but at the crime scene, a blue crystal sort of drops, and Joe picks it up. We don't know where this crystal came from. We can assume it's the same energy that brought Flash to the past. Now, Joe takes it and gets overtaken by something. We don't know what this something is yet, but to cut the story short, this is supposed to be the negative speed force that just overtook the Flash. Okay, negative speed force since day one is supposed to be red. A, why is it blue? And the significance of it being blue is something that's going to raise a question later. So keep in mind that. Okay, so we cut back to Barry Allen, who is spending some time with his family, of course. From the hospital, he... His mother kind of demands that they t they'll take him out to food, so he reluctantly agrees. While they're talking, their things get a bit awkward, and Barry at least gets some time to get a bit of get a bit of closure by spending time with his parents, which isn't the first, second, or third time, mind you. He has done this several times. Now Barry leaves this place. Of course, he tries running away anyway. Now from here on, the episode actually does get better. Why does it get better? Reverse Flash actually comes in and things get a bit interesting. Not Wells Reverse Flash, not Reverse Flash in his suit, just Earbird Thorn. Now, when Flash sees him, obviously, he hates him. So Barry tries the classic maneuver, tries to beat him up, and then tries the vibrating hand maneuver to try and stab him in the chest. But Earbird Thorn knows nothing's going to happen here. We know nothing's going to be happening here. And Barry knows nothing's going to be happening here. So I feel there's no tension in this scene because we know Barry's not a murderer, since season one anyway. Then I would say this is either the first best scene in the show, well this season anyway, or it's the second greatest. Because instead of fighting, Eobard Thorne and Barry just go to a bar to eat. Yes, that doesn't sound too interesting, but it's actually the dialogue that happens here. Because you get to just see Yobert Thorne, who isn't trapped, who isn't any, in any sort of rush. Nor is Barry at this point. They are just sat down having a conversation. Now, when they're talking, there's a good scene I like here. Well, there's several things I like about this conversation here, but let's go with it. 
Now, of course, Barry figures out that yes, Hubert Thorne is actually here because this is the night Hubert Thorne is here to kill him as a kid. I don't see how Hubert Thorne hasn't realized that his plan fails since Barry is still alive and an adult, but I guess with the, with the way time works, he wouldn't get erased until Hubert Thorne actually kills him as a kid. Anyway, I digress. So, right, Hubert Thorne actually points out that he's got Barry in a deadlock here. He's in a win-win situation. If Barry decides to put Hubert Thorne in Iron Heights, he messes with the timeline. And if he decides to save himself, he's also ruining the timeline. So, Hubert Thorne kind of just thinks he's already won already. And Barry lets him believe this because only Barry knows how the future is going to go from here. Say it. You win. I can't stop you. Delicious. Anyway, Barry decides to leave because, well, Hubert Thorne might have the plan to go kill him, but he can't really control anything until then. So Barry goes to speak with his parents. He tries to get a bit of closure, which is a nice scene. If it wasn't already done before, Barry has, getting, has gotten closure a lot of times in the past. He goes and talks to his parents, tries to indirectly tell them what he would try to tell his parents. Um, if he was talking to them, which they don't realize, they're the parents anyway. They get to wish him good luck with his child, unborn child at this point. Let's not get into that at all. My feelings on that matter are a bit separate. Might cover it in a new video, but who knows. Right, then we get the main enemy here. Joe West, who is currently being possessed by the negative speed force, which is angry because Barry is the one who distorts the balance by his own existence, and so it wants him dead. Now we are going to be talking about what I said about the negative speed force being blue. Okay, so if the negative speed force is blue, it shoots blue beams, it has blue energy, does that mean it's the negative speed force that was the one that, well, took Barry from the future to this very day? It seems to claim that this is all a part of its plan and everyone around is part of that si simple plan. Or well, complex plan because we don't really understand it, but all it seems to want to do here is kill Barry and that is it. Which seems a bit useless and a bit cowardly for a force of nature to choose to take over someone that Barry wouldn't kill. It's a force of nature, why not just kill him anyway? But okay, the way he gets defeated is... Well, I think he tries to steal Barry's speed or overcharge him. Anyway, Barry decides to, well, think about his family, think about the ones he loves and a huge explosion happens and Joe is suddenly okay. He speeds Joe to the car really quickly before Singh sees him, who is now a captain, not a captain, a detective at this point. Which, slight nitpick here, he could have done this exact same thing when it was DeVoe and he was about to go to prison. He could have cleaned out the entire crime scene and been out of the house, but he didn't. I suppose his speed only comes in handy when he needs it to. I don't understand it, do you? Who knows, let's continue. Okay, so now after Barry is done with this, we see him go and meet Thorn, who Thorn is currently on his way to go, well, kill Barry, and he's very hyped about it as you can clearly tell he seems excited almost to end Barry's life which he thinks he's going to succeed so obviously he's going to be happy about the entire situation now while he's running towards the house Barry intercepts him and starts talking to him well reverse flash reminds him that well are you trying to stop me because if you stop me you ruin the timeline Barry says something very Barry of him right here in which he claims that he's not here to save himself, he's here to save Yobat Thorn by trying to warn him that if he doesn't stop here, if he doesn't just let go, then his entire life is going to go to ruin. Which we know he's not lying, but does Barry really expect someone who hates him as much as Yobat Thorn is going to just let go of his grudge and say, Toodaloo? Is that it? He's just going to let go of all the hatred because you asked him to. 
because you gave him your talk no jutsu speech no that is not how your bathon thinks or acts he is someone who hates the flash so much he rewrote the past in order to have every single thing barry allen has to himself and make barry the villain this was shown in armageddon which is in season 8 so we can clearly tell this is kind of pathetic of an attempt but I suppose this is for Barry's own closure, which is a very common theme of this episode. Barry's trying to come to terms with every th single thing that's happening in his life. Okay, understood. Let's go. Now, predictably, Reverse Flash does not take this. He claims that, well, this is, some, this is a time where he wins and the Flash is trying to take away his only win. Obviously, he's not going to stand for this, so we get the iconic scene which we've seen multiple multiple times already reverse flash runs towards the house to go kill barry himself as a kid we've seen this happen before i i just cannot get excited about this the only thing i can find interesting about this scene is that now we actually see from the perspective of future barry so barry gives reverse flash a head start like a good sport he is because at this point the flash should and is much faster than thorn is so he gives him a few seconds head start he goes over the same scene the water starts floating and everything now when barry gets there he kind of just fights yobat thorn for a bit takes his younger self somewhere outside the street yobat thorn gets in a temper tantrum kills barry's mother and tries to run away but by doing this he's technically already erased the existence of the flash so reverse flash loses his speed we know how this story goes he talks to Gideon, finds out there's no speed left in him and he does his iconic no yell which is pathetic okay but there's an added scene to this which i actually like so flash after having saved his younger self actually oh i should also point this out when the flash is in the house about to save his younger self we actually see future barry look at his younger self and shake his head as in no you shouldn't change the scene which i like about that they kind of went full circle back to season one and then barry leaves and goes to reverse flash to talk to him finally and from here on, again, like I said, this episode is full of closure, so we have Reverse Flash, who is currently very full of hate, and practically promises to spend every waking moment of his life finding the, well, finding creative ways to either end Barry's life, or make him suffer. And as we've seen the Flash so far, we know he keeps to his promise. But we can also see that it was this scene that really cemented everything in his head. That, well, he knows he's going to lose. And the Flash makes it easy for him to understand as well. He even tells him, nothing is going to go your way from here. You've lost. Which makes him angrier, obviously. Okay, so... In a way, we can infer that all the hatred Yoba Thorn actually has for Barry. Every devious thing he does from here on out. Because of the Flash's gloating right here. It's what sparked the rest of his hatred. He already wanted to kill him, but now he just he doesn't even want to just kill him. He wants to make him suffer. And this is future Barry's fault. After his gloating, after his need for closure continues, the Flash even says that Well, Reverse Flash mentions that this should be the worst night, the worst day in Barry's life. And Barry says something along the lines of, well, and this is also the day that I actually found peace. Because, well, he just found closure in practically everything. Found closure in his mother's death. Finally got the chance to talk to his parents. He was the one who solved... Well, he was the one who saved himself as a kid. Because this is the time he actually has to do it himself. It feels like I've been speaking for a while now. And it seems almost like a... Seems almost like a constant rant, but... This is a symbolic scene, the Flash has finally found closure and we can expect that the Flash is not going to be carrying any of that burden, any of that guilt that's been with him since the first season, where we see that he's carrying a lot of guilt from the day his mother was killed. Now, they've kind of set themselves up here a bit. If the following episode that comes after this one is not of the Flash not having any of the previous burdens, then it's going to completely cancel out this episode, which I'm going to be pointing out here because when I do make a part 2, and the Flash does make a stupid mistake because of his burdens, I'm going to refer back to this very scene where the Flash has found closure in practically everything, 
and also the reverse flash should no longer be a problem. This is the place where the loop completely closes. We've gone all the way around. This is the entry point and the ending point. The reverse flash, well, the reverse flash should no longer be in the series after this place. We have seen him die. We have seen him get erased. We have seen him get changed in multiple different ways. Let the reverse flash's arc end here. We know his origins. We know where it ends and we know the tipping point or the time set in stone. Let it end. There's multiple ways you can end this series without having to bring back the reverse flash. He was already in part one of the finale. End it here. That is all I'm going to say on the reverse flash matter, unless he appears in part two, which I'll be reviewing part two as well. Now, after Flash is done with his gloating and getting his closure, he gets taken back to the future by the exact same blue energy. Okay, this raises a bit of a problem. Didn't the Flash defeat the negative speed force? Yeah, the Flash defeated the negative speed force. Or you can always just infer that, okay, you cannot really erase a force of nature. But why would the negative speed force want to return the Flash to the future if keeping him in the past is more advantageous to it killing him? Okay, so currently we don't, it's either it's the negative speed force, which is currently stupid that brought him to the past and took him back home, or there is something else in play here, which I think that might be, that might be the case because in the Flash's logo during the opening and closing scenes, you can actually see a bit of blue on it. So I'm hedging my bet on there being a force that is, I'm hedging my bets on there being a force that is upcoming, that is going to be announced in the second part. Well, I'm hoping anyway, and I really hope it comes to fruition because this is the finale. I really hope they don't I really hope they don't butcher this one, so let's hope on that now. Now let's get into the Eddie Thorne payoff from the first scenes of this episode. We see him working in a lab, similarly to how Barry got his speed. We see a lightning storm, red lightning of course, and we see this thorn. I don't know his actual name. I can assume now that it isn't Eddie Thorne. So he gets hit by this lightning, falls back to some chemicals on the table. We see red lightning flowing through his arm, which practically means he's a speedster now. No coma, of course. He wakes up almost instantly. He was just hit by lightning. Regular human right here. It took Barry, what, eight, nine months or something like that? This guy just got hit by lightning and he's up within less than 20 seconds okay he was a human that okay whatever force chose him i'm guessing the negative speed force it had some bias towards him and thought to just not change his biology at all we know flash's biology was changed but okay let's just leave that to the next episode i guess we can assume that this guy has super speed but the lightning also conveniently brought him a classified file of the death of Eddie Thorne. So we see him pick up the file, open it, we see deceased, we see the picture of Eddie Thorne that was being kept in the police. We can assume this is the murder file or I guess case file on Eddie's death. It's classified anyway so I don't know why it's here with him. Again, I suppose we'll find this out in part two but I'm just, I guess I'm just too impatient for this kind of thing. Anyway, we see him read this and He's, his reaction to seeing someone who looks exactly like him is, who the hell is Eddie Thorne? Personally, my reaction to seeing someone in a classified file who is dead, who looks exactly like me, would be, okay, um, who's playing a prank on me right now? Because first it was lightning hitting me, and now there's a classified file in, on my floor for some reason, which lightning decided to deliver like some kind of cosmic Uber service. Okay. Well, I'm going to be ending this review here. It was more of a rant, it wasn't too structured. I'll try to fix that in the next episode. I usually try to not stick to a very strict script, per se, because it just takes away from my actual thoughts on the episode or the thing I'm watching. It kind of becomes a bit too robotic. It even takes away from how I sound, making it a bit too robotic and not having any sort of... Uh, pure reaction from it at least this way you get to hear my reactions directly from the brain 
I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, I think the next episode is Thursday. I hope anyway. I'll be watching the video. I'll probably watch it about twice. And then I'll write my review on Friday if I don't actually watch the episode on Friday. I'll write a script. I'll have it all done. And I'll upload the video sometime next week. In the weekdays, probably Monday or Tuesday. Or Wednesday, depending on depending on my time anyway. Um, hope you liked the video. Like and subscribe. Comment down below. Oh, the comments for this one are not going to be pretty, are they? Anyway, comment down below your thoughts on the episode. Any things you noticed? Any things I missed? Any things I got wrong? I'm assuming there's a lot more. This is a, this is definitely going to be a hot take. Um, like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace. Relative peace.